Nick, um, just watching today, it seemed a little inefficient day for Jimmy G. And are we just kind of seeing some of the rust, maybe, that of a guy that hasn't played football for a while? I think it's just practice from everybody. You know, um, today was third down day. Um, so we worked all situations in third down, worked two minute. Um, so a lot of new stuff. Um, so everybody, everybody on the team, whether it's offense, defense, special teams, um, is going through that phase in camp where, you know, every day is a different day and they're, um, every day is a learning experience. You're going to make some mistakes and go learn from them and hopefully get better the next day. So whether it's quarterback, receivers, tight ends, uh, running back, fullback, they're all in the same boat. And, you know, everybody makes a mistake here and there. And you just got to coach it and correct it and move on and try and get better tomorrow. Nick, when you're not in pads, it's, it's more almost rehearsal. Do you not really judge a whole lot until pads come on? No, I mean, they were competing out there today with no pads. I mean, they were they were working hard. They were competing, you know. And, again, communication and assignment is a huge thing for us with no pads, obviously, and the technique. You know, so you go out there every day and you try and focus on the technique. You can see the technique. You can see the pad level. You can see the explosion. All those things you can be seeing, and hopefully it translates to the pads. I don't know, you know. Um, but overall, I mean, you can see them competing. You can see them working hard. Every day is an evaluation process, you know, whether that's a just a meeting. You know, everything's part of the evaluation process, and the pads are a great benefit to that. We get to see the physicality tomorrow and the next day, um, but no, every day is, I think, equal. I remember if was said last week that you felt he let the team down last year. If you, what have you seen that's different from him this camp so far? Yeah, I thought he was working hard. It's like with the whole receiver room. Um, you know, I think his mindset overall has been really good, been positive, um, taking the coaching, um, and really just trying to get better every day, just like the whole room. You know, the receiver room's done a great job of that with Coach Edgar. And, you know, they're working hard, taking the coaching points and working towards becoming better. And I think you see that every day at practice. Obviously, it's fairly unique and that you've worked, the guys have worked in the system um, in, in Jimmy and Brian. But when you turn over an entire quarterback room, what kind of, I guess, issues does that present uh, working toward a season? You know, in, I mean, I, I don't think there's really many issues that come from it. I think you just you start, you know, every day, every year with, you know, you start to build a foundation, you know, build a foundation of, Hey, we're going to start to do this, tweak some things, and and go from there. And I think just building the foundation of those guys. And obviously, yes, you're right. You know, if you have a returning player for any position, whether that's halfback, receiver, or tight end, it's gonna you're gonna they're gonna have some recall. Um, but overall, you know, every every year you have to go back over the basics. Whether you're Devonte Adams, you know, or or some other player that's new to the team, you know, you're gonna have to go back over the foundation and make sure they have all the coaching points and anything you change from the self scout from the off season. Mick, you've been on a lot of good football teams, but I'm yeah. curious. This is arguably the deepest wide receiver room in the NFL. When you look around that room and what everyone offers, is this kind of an offensive coordinator's dream come true? Well, there, first of all, I think that receiver room works extremely hard, you know, which it makes coaching very, very, very enjoyable, which every, every meeting they have them in there, they have their notebooks out, they're attentive, they're listening, and I think that's really at the end of the day what you strive for as a coach. Um, the whole entire unit is pretty much that way, which is great. Um, their attention is great. Their attention to detail is what you want it to be. And I think as a as a coach, as the speaking of the unit, um, it's very enjoyable to go in there in the meeting room every day and on the practice field because they want to get better. There's a couple of new rookies that you drafted that were starting to get a couple of reps and yeah. pretty good in the vertical game, Michael Mayer and Trey Tucker. What yeah. have you seen from them that you've played so far? Um, I mean, you know, Michael, uh, yeah, obviously um, – he uh, made a couple plays today, which was good to see in the passing game. Um, again, hopefully he can translate that to the running game and stuff like that tomorrow. Um, and then Trey Tucker, um, you know, first of all, no one, you know, I think um, has all the answers to come to the league, first of all. And they're, it's tough as a rookie. And I think those guys have done a good job of coming in here and just taking the coaching, especially like the young linemen as well, you know. And they really were working hard to kind of, I would say, just grow. And you hope to see that in practice with the young player. And I think you see that kind of expand throughout with them. And it's very, very fun to see with any young player in any position. Last year was your first as a coordinator, obviously. Yeah. Kind of learn from that experience that's you know, helping you coming into year two. I think just everything. You know, um, you guys have, I think, asked me that before in the spring and stuff like that. I think overall, it's just anything you do in life, you learn from your mistakes and you learn from just trials and and all those type of things. Hey, I'm going to do this a little bit differently because I didn't like how I did it before. Or, you know, I was doing that right. That felt really good. Just overall, I think everything, you expect everything. You know everything a little bit better. You know how to script practice. You know how to go through that. You know how to talk to the players. Hold the team meeting. All that kind of stuff. And you take notes and try and improve. I think that's the best part about coaching. You know, you know coaches can coach each other, which is great. You people are resources, and you look to get better and deliver something the right way to the players. Because at the end of the day, that's what you want to do as a coach.
You want to deliver the message to the players that helps them become effective on the field. And whatever best way possible that is, there's no right or there's no wrong. You just want to make sure it's best for them because each room is different and each team is different. So you try and formulate that to the team you have. What have you seen about uh, Aiden's development? How much does it help to have guys like Brian and Jimmy around? I'm sorry, who did you say? Oh, Aiden? Aiden. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, look, Brian has been in the league a long time, been in the system a long time. Um, and then obviously Jimmy has experience and a lot of playing experience, both in this offense and other ones. Um, and I think Aiden is just like the other two guys we asked about before is just becoming a sponge and trying to play fast and play NFL quarterback, you know, and learn the offense. And, but again, they have the same installations, but you know, there's their resources for Aiden, which is great, you know? And, um, I think the time he's spent on it has been coming to show fruition in practice, but overall, I think, Whenever time you have veteran quarterbacks in the room, they have little nuggets to kind of give the young guys, which is great, um, that you can't offer as a coach. You know, um, as a quarterback coach, you can tell them the reads and all that stuff and give them reminders. But you know, sometimes players have a little different tidbits to give each other, which that's great too. You know, whether it's receiver, back, tight ends, those veteran guys. Hey, try this, do this. You know, the veterans really take pride in doing that with each other, which is, which is really fun to see. Whether it's the receivers or the tight ends, I mean. You know, and as a coach, too, you can ask a player, hey, what do you think about this? Have you tried this before? You know, and they may have good or bad experiences from it. And that's the same thing with quarterback. So overall, it's been great. Jimmy has to keep his focus. He's the man. It's his job. So this is not a slam on Jimmy in the least bit. But in New England, Brian was able to be a backup, but also a coach to Mac Jones. How much does it help to have him? where he's sitting next to Aiden, showing him things, just so Aiden's hearing it from two places, a coach and a player. Yeah, it's, it's it, you know, all the meeting room that's in there, it's very, it's very very um, I would say, just open. And all those guys are, I would say, ch- talking back and forth and giving reminders and tips, and there's no egos in there at all, which is the best part about it. Brian doesn't have an ego, Jimmy doesn't have an ego, and Aiden's just a sponge. So, I mean, overall, and the, Coach Bo does a great job with those guys, and, you know, they go over everything in detail just like every other position group. But I think just overall, you know, having that communica- that communication between the whole room is is great, whether it's Brian or Jimmy to both Aiden. I yeah. last year you kind of led the way with the tight end room since you guys didn't, um, like, have a specific coach for yeah. it. Yeah. Jerry Shaplinski, you know, taking over that position. What are you seeing? Just kind of them working together as a group. Yeah, Jerry is a great person and, um, you know, fits in really well with the staff and works really hard. And, um, like everybody else in the staff, they – you know, I can't speak highly enough of the staff that we have in terms of trying to get a position out there. Um, Jerry just, you know, is a, is a really detailed coach. Attention to detail is important to him. Um, players respect him because of what he demands from him every day. Um, and I, I trust a lot to Jerry to get what we need to get the tight end room to do um, because he puts a lot of time and effort into it, and they see that. Right, thanks, Coach. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, sure. Thanks, bro. You got your own merch? Is that available somewhere? Oh, it's already sold out, man. You know, I want to put myself up there with Beyonce, but I think it's sold out in like an hour. So, uh. so first of all, I guess uh, Dorbin was in town yesterday. What, what was that experience like? What did you think of uh, watching soccer in America? Uh, it was pretty cool. Uh, I got to meet Mats Hummels, one of the 2014 world champions. I got to meet Emre Chan, one of my favorite players. Uh, I did get some negative comments on my social media from my hometown because uh, obviously Dortmund is, is not the club that I'm supposed to be supporting, but I had to take the opportunity, man. Uh, what, I saw you had some uh, thoughts on American soccer fans. <laughs> yeah, it was funny, man. Like uh, every offsides, they would, they would yell stuff like, it's a football game, like, let the boys play, you know, but it's offsides. We need that in soccer, you know what I mean? We can't just, but yeah, it was cool. Barcelona, Milano, are you going? Ah, uh, no, man. Tomorrow is first day in pads, so I got I got to be locked in for that. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's, it's the main main part that I wait on, right, every off season. So, uh, big work day tomorrow. We'll see where we're at with the with the run blocking, and uh, yeah, looking forward to it. Jacob, this is going to be a very big time now for Zamir. I'm just curious what you see out of him in his second camp. And what are your thoughts on his maturation to be ready for this opportunity? Man, it's Amir, honestly, I mean, this locker is right next to mine. I always try to give him a good word every day, but he's just been coming in, um, you know, super focused, super working hard, asking questions every day. And um, I'm, I'm excited to, to be out there leading the way for him. I guess what is the, the mood in the room with, with Josh not there and everybody just kind of understanding that he's not there uh, with you guys? 
guys, but you want them to be there, but, it, you know, you support them, I'm sure. So I just, what is the mood there? Yeah, I mean, every, everybody is, is supporting Josh, and this is just a situation. It's a situation around the league, and, uh, you know, uh, I hope it gets figured out. We see what happens, but uh, right now we're in camp, you know, and we we have to get ready for our first day of pads. So the mood is good, you know. It's, it's football. As somebody who, who grew up maybe with uh, without softball being a main sport, do you sympathize with Nate Hobbs' fly catching skills, or do you uh, <laughs> kind of like him with that time? Oh man, listen, I was right there, man, and I thought he had it too. <laughs> but uh, actually, a couple a couple innings later, uh, I had a fly by fly ball going my way, and I let it go right over my head too. So uh, that stuff is a little harder than than uh, I guess we expected. Uh, also, somebody should have told me before the game to touch the home plate when when you want to score. You know, what I mean, I thought it was more like a finish line situation. But <laughs> next year, all right, next year we're coming and we're winning this thing. Uh, all right. Yeah, what is the difference in between year one and year two with so many guys now that do understand the system, being able to help the new guys? Where last year everybody was well, not yeah. you most. Yeah, I mean, if uh, if you're new to an offense, there's always a lot more work that you have to put in and just understanding the verbiage, understanding the terminology. Once you uh, make that step, then you can get into the, the, the real details of, of the football, of how you're going to adjust to certain looks, um, how you're going to key the defense up, and you can think ahead a little bit as a player. So, um, you know, just having more time in the offense helps, but at the end of the day, you know, we, you have to go out there every day and, and, and put it all out there and perform. So... Um, yeah, man, we are taking the day by day, and we'll see where it goes. Jakob, obviously, you know, the fullback position is something that's kind of beginning to be phased out of football, and you're the only fullback on this roster. Considering your skill set, what you do, you know, how much pride do you take in the importance that you provide to this team? Man, uh, the, the, I think all fullbacks take take a bit of pride in, in being uh, the last ones that are still here, right? Like, I don't think the position will ever completely go away. Um, it's been the, the kind of the running story for the as far as as long as I've been in the league, right, five years, that uh, the fullback is going to die out. But really, the numbers haven't changed that much. The teams that do have a fullback have a fullback. The teams that don't don't. Um, but I definitely feel like we're standing on the shoulders of you know giants, guys like James Devlin that that I came up uh, underneath, Mike Alstar, all these guys that played the position before us, and uh, we're trying to keep it alive, man. Working with the tight ends and the running backs. How many positional group meetings do you go to? <laughs> Man, well, I, I, I used to be in the tight end room. I'm, I'm here. I'm in the in the running back room. But um, you know, the the fullback and especially in this offense, there's so many different places that you can be that you can uh, that you have to be ready for. Um, so yeah, I just try to take a little bit from everybody. You mentioned Allstott. Are you? Going to Josh, trying to get in his ear to give you some more carries. <laughs> hey man, listen, I, I I try not to be that guy, you know. Uh, wherever coach sees me, that's that's where I'll be. But I did watch a uh, 2001 Ravens against Tampa Bay game the other night, and that was that was pretty cool to see. <laughs> you you did a couple of times. With... Oh, Go ahead. You arrived to the NFL with the International Player Pathway Program, and yeah. now the Raiders have David too that arrives here that way. Are you trying to be a mentor with him, trying to tell him what he has to do to be like you, a five-year vet? Oh, a hundred percent, man. I mean, uh, David's situation is a little different. You know, obviously he came directly from Nigeria, never really played football before, but um, I had the chance of meeting him in the spring already uh, and, and speaking to him there a little bit, and then now watching him grow throughout OTAs and, and where he's at now. Um, you know, I, I think he still has a lot, lot to learn, a long, long journey ahead of him, but he's definitely. Uh, putting the work in every day and and coming to work with the right mindset because when you're new to football like that you know you just have to keep chopping away at it and eventually the the dam will break so he's on the right track you had mentioned a couple times Jacob. what is your excitement level to get the pads on <laughs> I mean, it's the most important day of the year, right? This first day of pads, real football starts. You know, we can finally, all the stuff that we X'd and owed out all year, uh, we're finally putting the, the, the medal to the floor and, uh, and getting in there. So, um, yeah, for me, that's the most exciting part about training camp. And uh, once, we, once we cross that, you know, it, we can go get back to the third down passes and all that stuff. But first day of pads is important. The real trash talking starts. Oh yeah, 100. I mean, you guys, you guys saw it a little bit today. Things is getting a little bit more chippy out there, so uh, I think it's going to be a good day tomorrow. What defense has been talking enough that they're going to get hit first? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think we all know our 
front man trash talker here on the team, right? Uh, the Condor. I mean, he's he's going to always do his thing. So we'll, we'll see how that goes. With the same offensive line that you played with last year, how much does that make your job easier in terms of picking up blocking assignments and then being the lead blocker down, yeah. down in the A and B game? I mean, it, it doesn't necessarily make the blocking easier, but it, it does help with the communication. You know, you just... Uh, um, you, got, you know each other. You know each other's tendencies. You can give each other reminders on things that you you know know that the other person might struggle with. So, um, yeah, I think the, the camaraderie and everything has just been been coming together a little bit more this year. Obviously, Raider Nation is worldwide. There's a lot of Raider fans in Germany. But how much pride do you take on trying to be that ambassador from inside the team to help the fan base grow even more in your native country? Yeah, I mean that's that's been my. That's been my uh, my mission here, right? Uh, trying to uh, expand this pathway that I came across on, and um, you know the, the the game back home is growing and expanding every year. I mean, the European League of Football is is going into its third season right now. My franchise is doing pretty good. You know, I think we're sitting at about six and one or seven and one right now. Um, so yeah, I think that's that's my role as an ambassador for the sport. Uh, try to do my best to. Uh, you know, put out content and stuff for the people back home and uh, play good football while I'm at it so I can stay here. On the back end of that question, I know you kind of feud a little bit with Jermaine on Twitter. You know, you know, <laughs> camp in, in London, yeah. You know, about, uh, you know, the Germany camp versus the London camp. Yeah. Is, that, is that something that you kind of have a passion for, you know, going back to Germany and maybe doing something to that regard with post camp? 100%. So we're, we're already working on it. We already uh, had some conversations. We're definitely trying to make this. England versus Germany match happen, uh, hopefully in London. Um, but yeah, I mean, we we, we both with, come from international backgrounds, so we, we try to do our best to grow the game back home. Because I think eventually that, that'll help, you know, help the league and help us, right? We need somebody to still play football 30 years from now when it's time to collect our pensions. So anything we can do to, to pay for it. Do you, want, do you want to admit publicly that you thought some British food wasn't that bad? Yeah, I can. I can. I think I can go on record with that, right? So I was talking a lot of uh, cash to Jermaine about uh, eating beans for breakfast, but I, I tried that out. It's, it's not that bad. Yeah, those those baked beans that they talk about is, with toast, you can do it. Doable. <laughs> Edible. Anything else? <laughs> right, that's it. Appreciate you guys. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. Brandon, how does competing every day against a guy like Devontae Adams make you better? Man, that's great. Um, you know, going against a, a guy on that level, you know, it's, it, it, all it does is help me to better, you know, better my craft. And, you know, I know I'm, I'm giving good work against him. So, you know, I'm, I'm helping him. And, um, you know, it's, it's great. I've, you know, I haven't really had to do that. And, you know, going against him, he's teaching me. I ask him questions. Um, about what he's seen on, you know, some of the things that I'm doing. And it's just, you know, helping each other every day. So it's been great. You, oh, you, you had one rep in particular kind of early in practice today against him where, you know, you, you were right on him, made a play against him. Like, what kind of confidence does that, does that bring to you? Uh, it brings great confidence. Um, knowing that I'm going against a guy like that every single day, um, you know, it helps me to, you know, just be extremely confident out there against anybody else. Um, you know, we have great receivers here, and, you know, all of them are great. Um, so, you know, just going against him, um, being able to make plays, and, you know, we go back and forth. So, you know, it's been it's been phenomenal, honestly. You let him know about it when that happens. I'm not really like a chirper. I just be I just chill, you know. But uh, I might celebrate a little bit. But you know, in my head, I know I'm just doing me. I feel like today the uh, competitiveness um, jacked up a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, is that a sign that? Pads are getting ready to come on, and, and you guys are getting ready to turn that corner. Uh, I think it's I think it's been competitive every single day. Uh, we know the pads are coming on within the next what, tomorrow, um, so I think it's just been been getting better every single day as as far as the competitiveness level. Um, you know, every time we go out there, we we compete with those guys, and you know they compete against us. So um, I think it's been definitely going up higher. Um, I think it's just a level of comfort that we're all getting, and um, trying to you know we get through the first week of camp and. You know, still learning each other, still learning how to play with each other. So, um, as far as defensive wise and offensive wise, so uh, you know, yeah, it's been great. So, I know today there was a heavy emphasis on third downs. Um, we always think of that from an offensive standpoint, but not always from a defensive standpoint. That's got to be as competitive as it gets to get the other team off the field. All right, yeah. So were you guys kind of feeling that today a little bit? For sure. Um, you know, our coaches tell us that all the time. 
uh, you know, third down is an important down. You got to get off the field as far as the defensive. defensive. So um, just got to get off the field, you know, honing on your technique, honing on your craft, and, um, you know, just compete at the highest level. Earlier this offseason, you were talking about how you really wanted that experience of going through a full training camp with this team, having mm -hmm. come in in the middle of the season or beginning of the season when you first were here. So what has been the experience like of just being here and getting able to know these guys a lot better? Uh, it's been great. You know, obviously when I was here in 2021, um, I was kind of familiar with the system. I was familiar with some of the guys that were already here. I'm still familiar with, you know, some of those guys are still here. Um, but being able to go through a full training camp here, um, you know, in a new defense, you know, it's <clears throat> coming along very well. And uh, I think we're gelling, you know, gelling together well. And uh, it's been great, you know, just working every single day. You know, we've been through OTAs, been through, now we're going through training camp. So, uh, different level, like not even, not a different level of, of you know competitiveness, but it's definitely hyped up. Uh, the, you know, training camps a grind, as we all know. So you know, just kind of you know staying even kill and uh, coming in here just ready to work every single day has been great. To take you back to that 2021 season. Uh, you know, they, they pulled you off a of practice squad. I think I remember you came in here and did, did some really good things. Had, had a nice year when you had some injuries at that position. How, how important was that um, in, in kind of the, uh, leading the way to this next step of your career? <clears throat> Um, it's been great. That part, you know, that was a hard time for me, you know, just coming in from, because it was different. It was a new experience, you not know, having to pack up and go from L.A. to, to Vegas. Um, but when I came in here, you know, I was welcomed with open arms, and I just wanted to just compete every day and, you know, show these guys that they could trust me. And um, I think I did that in 2021. But, you know, coming into the next couple of seasons definitely helped confidence, helped, you know, everything about, you know, the situation. So, just really honing in on my craft, just learning from, you know, the guys on the offensive side, learning from, you know, my new coaches and stuff like that. I'm learning new things. I'm learning new techniques. I'm, you know, being, being a student of the game. Um, <clears throat> so it's been it's definitely been a blessing. Uh, just, you know, just trying to go through it every single day. Brandon, what about Coach Graham's system do you think um, gives you an emphasis or a competitive advantage so that you can thrive this year? Um. Honestly, just you know, different. It's gonna be different, uh, different ways, different. Uh, what I'm trying to say. Different coverages for sure. You know, I came from a, a three deep, uh, you know, system. So, you know, this is kind of like multiple. So, I'm just learning different ways to play the game. I'm learning different nuances in the system. Uh, this is gonna help you, definitely in the long run. So, I mean, I'm a longer corner. You know, I like to get hands on guys, stuff like that. So. I think we all have our different techniques that we like to play, and um, you know it's been you know it's been great so far. So you know just trying to just learn every single day, you know, just grow, and that's all I need. So all we need. So it's been good. What about this defense tells you that you can create more takeaways, which is one thing that everyone says needs to happen. You have to have more takeaways. What about this defense makes you believe they can do that? Um, you no, know, a lot of players just freeing up. You know, being being able to look at the ball, being able to you know switch up different. Uh, technique stuff like that, so um, I don't want to give away too much. So, but it's been it's been great. Uh, you know, just learning every single day, like gelling, gelling with each other, and uh, really just learning our play styles. You know, so everyone has a different play style, and uh, once you know that, once you figure that out, you kind of know. So I think it'll be great, a good year for us. Um, you know, I don't you know want to you know, talk too far in the you know in the future, but you know, so far, you know, I think we're liking what we see. So. Even though it's for a live, very small period of time, you were teammates with Devon Diablo at Virginia Tech, and now you're here with him on the Raiders, kind of seeing him go from being in that DB room to now being a linebacker in the team. What are some things that you've noticed about him he's progressed, and how cool is it to be back with him? Man, so, you know, me and you know Diablo were at Virginia Tech together. He was playing safety. And then when I got here in 2021, obviously when he was drafted, he was, you know, switched to a linebacker. You know, he's definitely gotten bigger. He's always been big, a big dude, but uh, definitely gotten bigger, you know. Um, and he's... He's been phenomenal, you know, even from that 2021 season, him learning the defense, him coming in, making plays. And then, you know, when I come back, you know, he's still, you know, doing his thing, making plays still. Uh, you know, I'm proud of him. You know, it's, you know, I knew him from when he was, you know, young, young. So we played two, two seasons together at Virginia Tech. So, um, you know, just seeing him grow uh, every single day and, you know, him having that confidence to do his thing. So it's been cool. Did you see that potential in him when he was uh, young, young, in your words? Did you believe he's going to be an NFL linebacker? Oh, for sure, man. Every single, you know, he worked his, he worked his butt off every single day. So, you know, I have that, I had always had that confidence in him. And, um, you know, he's showing that now. Uh, 
we, we saw your cousin make at least one uh, nice play on, on, on a ball today. I know you've already talked about how excited you are for him to be here, but w what's it like now that he's actually been at training camp and it, how's he doing? Man, it's been good, man. He's uh, he's definitely learning the system well and uh, he's making plays. You know, we all we all were turned up when he made that play today. You know, just told him to catch the ball, but you know, he's good. You know, I always got to give him something, but um, you know, we can, we talk every single day. So, you know, he's got his little uh, he got to sing in a little bit, so he had to do that. But you know, I'm trying to just just be, you know, be in his head every single day, and you know, he knows he can ask any type of question. So, you know, he's continuing to make plays and continuing to just progress, you know, each and every day, and that's really all it's about. Just you know, wanting to be one percent better uh, than the day before. So. Um, he's continuing to do that, and I think you know it'll just continue to grow. Brandon, what what does Marcus bring into the to the secondary as a veteran? Oh man, he's he's been amazing. You know, uh, you know he definitely is a ball hawk. I uh, definitely, you know, I ask him questions every day about what he sees, about you know, because he's been in the system for a long time. Um, you know, he brings that competitive toughness, and and you know we're all we all have that, but you know him coming in, being a vet. Um, being that ball hawking player that we know he is and he knows he is that you know that's just something we all want to kind of rally rally along with and we all want to create turnovers and <clears throat> you know he's been just just helping us all so um, having him here has definitely been been good for all of us and um, you know I think it's going to be a good at the end of the day so